This is Top Accolade Global News Update. I am Abiodun Mohammed. As many as 13,000 Ukrainian soldiers have been killed in battle since Russia invaded the country nine months ago, according to an official in Kiev. The comment from Mikhailo Podolyak, an advisor to Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, appeared to be the first update on the number of fighters killed since late August, when the head of the armed forces said nearly 9,000 troops had died. The number of military casualties has not been confirmed by Ukraine's armed forces. Podolyak added that Zelensky would make the official data public when the right moment comes. Ukraine's military mounted a lightning counter-attack in September that saw them win back swords of territory in the northeast and south of the country, including the strategically important city of Kherson, which had been occupied by Russia shortly after its February 24 invasion. With the weather turning colder, the most intense clashes are now taking place in the eastern region of Donetsk. Earlier, United States President Joe Biden and his French counterpart Emmanuel Macron, who is in Washington DC, promised to maintain support for Ukraine and condemned Russia's illegal war of aggression against its neighbor. Further easing of COVID-19 testing requirements and quarantine rules in some Chinese cities was met with a mix of relief and worry on Friday as hundreds of millions await an expected shift in national virus policies after widespread social unrest. The loser measures were welcomed by workers frustrated by three years of economically damaging curbs but have jolted others who suddenly feel more exposed to a disease authorities had consistently described as deadly until this week. The elderly, many of whom are still unvaccinated, feel the most vulnerable. Shi Wei, a Beijing resident suffering from lymphatic cancer, spends most of his time isolating but still worries about getting COVID and giving it to his 80-year-old mother as he goes out for hospital treatment every three weeks. China's COVID policies have stifled everything from domestic consumption to factory output and global supply chains and have inflicted severe mental stress on hundreds of millions of people. Anger over the world's toughest curbs fueled dozens of protests in more than 20 cities in recent days in a show of civil disobedience unprecedented in mainland China since President Xi Jinping took power in 2012. A United States appeals court has dealt a blow to Donald Trump, ending an independent review of documents seized from the former president's Florida home and allowing all of the records to be used in a criminal investigation against him. In a unanimous decision on Thursday, the Atlanta-based 11th Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals ruled in favor of the Justice Department in its challenge to District Judge Eileen Cannon's September decision to name a special master to review the records to decide if some should be kept from investigators. The three-judge panel said Cannon, a Florida-based judge appointed by Trump, lacked the authority to grant the former president's request for a special master made in a lawsuit he filed in August two weeks after FBI agents carried out a court-approved search at the Smaralago estate in Palm Beach. It also overturned Cannon's decision to bar investigators from accessing most of the records pending the review and threw out Trump's suit. Trump faces a federal criminal investigation into his retention of sensitive government records after leaving office in January 2021, including whether he violated the 1917 Espionage Act, which makes it a crime to release information harmful to national security. Investigators also are looking into potential unlawful obstruction of the probe. Japan, South Korea and the United States have imposed sanctions on North Korean officials connected to the country's illicit weapons programs, with Washington saying Pyongyang's ballistic missiles pose grave risk to the region and the entire world. The U.S. Treasury Department on Thursday named the individuals as Jo E. O, Yoon Jin and Kim Soo Gil all of whom the European Union designated for sanctions in April. The sanctions freeze any US-based assets of the individuals and bar dealings with them but appear likely symbolic. South Korea's foreign ministry announced sanctions on seven other individuals, including a Singaporean and a Taiwanese person, and eight entities. All are already under US sanctions imposed between January 2018 and October 2022, the ministry said. Japan also designated three entities and an individual for new sanctions, Japan's foreign ministry said, including the Lazarus Group, which is suspected of carrying out cyber attacks. 
China and Russia have blocked recent efforts to impose more United Nations sanctions on North Korea, saying they should instead be eased to jumpstart talks and avoid humanitarian harm. That has left Washington to focus on trilateral efforts with Japan and South Korea as well as European partners. Twitter on Friday suspended Kanye West's account just two months after it was reinstated as its owner Elon Musk said he had violated the platform's rules prohibiting incitement to violence. Musk, who calls himself a free speech absolutist, had welcomed the return of the rapper, now known as Ye, to the platform in October. In quote, I tried my best, despite that, he again violated our rule against incitement to violence. Account will be suspended, Musk tweeted late on Thursday. West's account was suspended within an hour of Musk's post made in a reply to a Twitter user who had said in quote, Elon, fix Kanye please. Twitter did not immediately respond to a request for comment before suspending Ye's account, which had over 30 million followers. Twitter had restricted one of his tweets. Top Accolade News could not independently verify the contents of the post. The social media platform restored the rapper's account before the completion of its $44 billion takeover by Musk. Musk later clarified that he had had no role in bringing Ye back on Twitter. Ye on Thursday tweeted a photo of Hollywood mogul Ari Emanuel spraying water at the back of Musk's head with a hose. He captioned the picture, in quote, let's always remember this as my final tweet, Ye24, before the account was suspended. Musk responded that Ye's account was suspended for incitement to violence and not for posting an unflattering pic of me posted by Ari. That is the size of Top Accolade Global News Update. You can follow us on our social media platforms as displayed on your screen. Happy weekend.